Welcome back to a new episode of Mushroom Programming. In this episode, I'll show you how to do something very important, which I couldn't find any tutorials on, and that is how to create a Wix API endpoint or an endpoint, an API endpoint of your website. Now, this allows people to actually use a link or kill into your website, maybe to get some information from a database, or maybe to add to your database or delete an item. It basically gives a public access to few things in your website that you can do. You're basically going to create your own API. Now, to do this, it's actually very simple, but I couldn't find a lot of tutorials on it. And this is the website that we're going to create an API for. Now, this is a free to use or a free public website and that I created. And if you go to CMSC, I'm just going to explain to you the structure of this website. So we've got so many different databases. And to make this easy, the API is just going to show or present the information from one of these databases. As a JSON format. Now I'm going to pick just the smallest data set to make things easy, which will just be P items. So if I have a look at P items, all I've got is a title and a price to each item. So by the end of this video, we're going to be creating an API that using curl or using just by putting the link, basically you'll be able to go and get a JSON uh, formatted uh, response from the server, basically from your website with this information. So the first thing to do is I'm just going to open home in a new page so we can always go back and refer to this. And what I'll do is we're going to be starting by editing the website. And I'm going to click edit website. Now, obviously you need to make sure that you are actually in uh, dev mode. So click here, make sure this is on for me. It says turn off because it's already on. Now, what we're gonna do is I want to go to my public backend. We're actually not going to be creating any UI. We're just creating a backend file. So we're going to click on public and backend over here. And in the backend, we're going to click on the plus icon. And then we've got so many different things. Now what I'll click is expose site API and I'll click on this. And what that did is that it created a folder or a file, sorry, called HTTP functions.js. Now obviously you can create this manually or you can just create it. You can create it that way and then you have some like sort of instructions on what to do and even uh, an example of a function over here. What I'll do is I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this. But before deleting it, I just want to show you a few things. Now, automatically, what your link is going to be is going to be this. So if you're on a public free website, or sorry, if you're on a free website, so you're not paying for this website, this will be your link. It will be HTTPS and then your name. So for example, my name for my websites is tapaway. So it'll be tapaway.wixsite.com and then the name of the website and then underscore functions. And then you will have your name of your function over here. And if your function does require parameters, just like this one, then you will also be able to pass them just like this. So let's have a look as an example. Now, this is already done for us. So let's see the existing sample and see if that works. And then what I'll do is I'm actually just gonna go ahead and uh, delete this and create our own function to show you even more advanced things. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to click enter. And this will give us an error because I didn't fill in the username. And let's publish this so we make sure this is live. And what I like to do so we can steal some information is let's jump to the live view site. So this is the name of, this is me, tapaway.wixsite.com. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we're gonna go to the page where it said error. And we're going to replace everything over here with that one like this. Obviously for you, it will be yours. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on enter and let's see if we still get an error. So as you can see, we didn't get an error. We actually managed to use the, our website's API, the function that was already created, which takes two numbers. In this case, we put three and four, and it multiplies it with each other using this function over here. And you can see that we get a response saying the product is 12. Now let's go ahead and delete this and create that API endpoint that I wanted, which allows us to view 
the information from this data set. So to do this, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete <laughs> everything in this function. And what I'll do is I'll start from scratch. So we need to input a few things. Let me see if I can zoom in. Oops. Okay, it's not letting me zoom in. Maybe if I do that. Okay, so I'm going to say import and inside of here I'll put okay. After that I'll say not found. And then I'll say server error. After this we can say from and Wix provides us with a library that we can use all this from. So I'll say Wix HTTP functions. Now, if you're not familiar, these are uh, standard protocols of what happens based on the website. So if things work, you'll get OK. If it's not found, it will give you not found. And this gives you like the error, things like 404 and so on. After that, we need to import something else. So I'm going to say import Wix data from Wix data, this one. Now, if you're creating a function that does not require this, then you don't need to put it. But for this tutorial, you do need it. So Wix data from Wix data simply just allows us to access our website's database data sets. After that, we're going to create a first function and we're actually only creating one. So I'll say export function get. And here I'll say load items just like this. And after that, I'll say request. We'll open and close a bracket. Now, a few things to unpack here. Where it says get, there are a few different ways that you can actually make an API call. So you can have a get, which simply means you're only getting or receiving items. There is post, which means you're putting things into the server. There's delete, removes, and put. Uh, I think I might have mentioned that, but again, allows you to put things. It's very simple, and sometimes it actually does not matter how you specify, but for now, we're going to specify that this will be a get request, and then this load items will be the name of our function. Let's keep going. After that, we need to create some options or some information that our website needs to know about what this API is and how it's set up. So I'm going to say let options, and I'll say it's equal to open and close a bracket. Inside of here, I'll add some headers. I'll open and close a string and I'll say content type. And then we will say, oops, that it's of equal to application JSON, just like this. And that's actually all the headers that we need. Now I'm going to go on this after the options. So over here on the second one, and I'm going to be returning. And over here, we're going to be adding that function that allows us to actually receive or query the database. So I'm going to say Wix data dot query. And inside of here, I'll open for now just an empty string. And then I'll say dot find, oops, like this. And then I'll say dot then. And I'll explain at the end what each of these mean. Now this area can get a little bit confusing, so make sure you just place it like this. Inside of our then, so this means that, okay, well, after we find the information that we want from the data set, what do we do? Well, it simply says, and then, basically. And inside of here, all we're going to be doing is we're just going to be doing some checks. So our first check is going to be if results.items.length is greater than zero. So if we're actually receiving some data back, so if we have some information, what do we want to do? Well, what we want to do is we want to create, we want the options dot body. So now we're creating that JSON file or that JSON string basically to be equal of items results dot items. This is what we want to return to the user if we do actually have information. And after that, we're going to say return, okay in our options so all right everything went well then we're going to return that message or that status of a k and we're going to be passing the options that we just created now what if things are not actually okay well let's handle that as well so what i'll do is i'll say options dot body and i'll say error and i think i did a mistake here we're meant to have an equal sign we're going to say error 
and I'm actually just going to copy this because it does get confusing like that and we're going to be putting a comma at the end and then we'll say so if you do actually have an error error <laughs> then I'll say return and I'll say not found and then I'll pass in the error basically just like this and we're passing the option now let's say something else actually went wrong so maybe the page is wrong or maybe you provided some wrong information what we want to do is we want to catch the error so I'll say dot catch and then I'll say error and oops yeah like this and we're going to say equal to and here we just need to provide the extra bracket now we're good and here all we need to do is simply again say options dot body is equal to and a bracket and we'll say error we simply just want to present i don't know why that keeps happening we just want to present our error so i'm going to say error is equivalent to the error that we received and a comma and that's actually it. now after this what we need to do is we need to then return the error so i'll say return server error and inside of here i'm passing the options now believe it or not that is actually all we need to do so first we're querying our database and oh i forgot we actually need to write the name of our database now to get this the easiest way in my opinion is to click on cms your collections this is the one that we want to use so i'm just going to click here and i'll click on edit settings we're going to click on this because that is the name of our id of our data set and we're going to be providing it over here just like this awesome and you can obviously provide any more information like queries or parameters or anything else that allows you to filter the data database and the results but for now we just want to print or show all of them so i'm going to publish this and remember the name of our function is load items so let's actually copy here to avoid anything going wrong and i'm gonna go over here to our link that we already created i'm going to be removing all of this and we're simply going to be providing our function name and if I click enter, hopefully I don't get an error. We don't. We actually get a JSON. We can access our API with a get request and get a full list of all the items added and all their information. You've got uh, the stickers roll, $59, whatever. So exactly like we have here, let's just check stickers roll, stickers roll, $59. There we go. We just created an API using our Wix website. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you did benefit from it. Please let me know in the comments if you like this or not, or if you needed any more information. I hope that you did enjoy it, and I'll be trying to make more advanced and more complicated videos like this in the future. Thank you, and see you in the next episode.